Well, it's a beautiful night for football, and it's a beautiful night to be a Traverse City Central Trojan. The Trojans snowplowed Caledonia in the first half. The Petoskey Northmen are going back in time to play a game here at Central School at the gym that they called home for nearly 70 years. This is a team that was not ranked at all during the season, but they came all the way here and forced extras in the state title game. 2021 Football National Champions banner welcomes you to Top Taggart Field. But today's win was the first time that any of those teams cleared that final hurdle and brought home a state championship. But there's one signal caller who's inspired his teammates and his head coach by his willingness to get back in the huddle no matter what. It's a story filled with highs and lows, great successes, life-altering mistakes, and second chances. Through it all, there's one constant, the relentless pursuit of his dream. For Alex Thomas, football is all about pursuit. Intercepted by Alex Thomas. Pursuit of the ball, pursuit of the receiver, and pursuit of his dream of playing in the NFL. I'm on a mission. Thomas the pick. Thomas was a Division I recruit coming out of high school, an assistant coach at the University of Cincinnati, sold him on being a Bearcat and chasing his NFL dream. Let me hear me of my mom and my dad how much, how much they just believed how, how high I can go in my potential. So he just, that's what always stuck with me. So Thomas went to Cincinnati. As a redshirt sophomore, he played in 12 games and made four interceptions. That was when I got the good buzz and the scouts and everybody was, it's pretty much when everybody knew about me and everything. With NFL scouts taking notice, the dream was within reach. But then Thomas made a decision that would change the rest of his life. It happened so fast, it's just like, it went from, from me saying, like, come on, to, to me, being behind a, me, behind, me being behind bars. Thomas and a friend were arrested for marijuana robbery. His friend had a gun with him. When I went to, like, my bond hearing, that's when they offered me, like, 14 years, and, and they was talking about stuff like that. So that's when, when it was just like, oh, snap. Suddenly, the dream was farther away than it had ever been. His situation, closer to a nightmare. I mean, there's people banging, yelling. Like they know, they knew, they knew, I guess they watched the TV, so they knew the type of person I was, so they yelling. Like, you know what I mean, we got this football player in here, we about to see if he can, you know what I mean, fight, all that. Thomas was ultimately sentenced to two years in prison. Plenty of people told him he had blown his chance. The dream was over. Even the officers used to say like, you know, you messed up your life, you a mess up, it's just, I used all that as motivation and the chip on my shoulders. Thomas kept pursuing. Even behind bars, he was free to dream. Literally working out every single day, like doing 3,500 push-ups, 2,000 pull-ups, like dips. It was just like, for me to do that every single day and to be in there with like people who was like lifers, and they always telling me like, go hard, go hard, because you about to get out, you about to get out, you're going to get your chance. On June 15, 2019, Thomas was released from prison. Within a week, he heard from Ferris State head coach Tony Anise. He was pretty much just trying to see like, what type of person I was and what I was, what I was really chasing. And I was just telling him I'm trying to go to the NFL, like I just want to show everybody. I mean, that you can, you still can do it no matter what you've been through. You want somebody to, you know, kind of look back and say, hey, you know, I made, made, made a mistake and own the mistake, and, and he did that. Thomas came to Ferris State and quickly established himself as a starter. This season, he leads the Bulldogs in interceptions, and his 99-yard fumble return touchdown against Grand Valley State swung the momentum of the rivalry game. Unbelievable turn of events. The man who comes out of it is Alex Thomas. He goes 99. It kind of just made me just embrace life and just like love everything that I've been through and just and just believe that you feel me. It is people out here who do who who do care about you and not what you've been through. More so like who you are now. So that's what that's what I learned from just being here. Thomas says the Bulldogs have given him a second family and a second chance to pursue his NFL dream by itself. That second chance is a dream come true. Don't give up, no matter what it is. Whatever your dream is, go, you the one who believe into it, so you the only one at the end of the day can achieve it, make that go happen, so no matter what you hear, don't ever give up. Before the home opener last Saturday, Central Michigan renamed the home radio booth after the late Don Shido. Shido was a beloved broadcaster for the Chippewas before his sudden passing in 2019. I sat down with his former colleagues and friends Adam Jaxa and Brock Gutierrez to hear more about Shido's legacy in Mount Pleasant. All right, here comes Central Michigan, ball at the 49, Chippewas down three, 27-24, untimed down, looking to tie or take the lead. Cooper Rush back to throw it for CMU, steps up in the box, he's going to lob it deep towards the end zone, and it's caught, a lateral back, Chippewas still on the move. Five. He's the voice of the university, right, but 
I'd get so excited and I'd uh, a lot of times trample over his calls. Corey Wills looking for the end zone for CMU and he's in the end zone! You got this! Touchdown Central Michigan! Most broadcasters would be very frustrated with that. Don loved it. He said it was part of the show. For 10 years, Don Shido was the voice of the Chippewas, but he was much more than just a play-by-play -play broadcaster. He could always make you laugh anytime you're around him. If you're feeling down or maybe not having the best day, Don always had the jokes to, to crack you up and uh, just someone that cared about you. He, he was, again, someone that really enjoyed helping out others, especially young broadcasters like myself and so many others that have come through this program. Shido's kindness and dry sense of humor endeared him to his colleagues as much as his listeners. I don't know any other play-by-play -play broadcasters in the country that would willingly take games off to allow someone like me, who's young and needs experience and reps, to go call the games for him. He called hundreds of games, but the game before his first chance to call CMU in a MAC championship would be his last. One win last season, improved to eight and four, six and two in the MAC. They'll play in the MAC championship game a week from Saturday against Miami at noon at Ford Field in Detroit. Shido died in a car accident that Wednesday, just three days before the MAC championship. I remember it like it happened yesterday, it, it, coincidentally, or uh, just. Happens to be my son's birthday, so we were uh, getting ready to celebrate my son's birthday, and I got a call from the athletic director here, and uh, yeah, it was pretty. Uh, it was well loved all the way around. There's no doubt. Three days later, Jaxa and Gutierrez called the 2019 MAC championship game. It was extremely emotional, um, a whirlwind, trying to step in and call a game that he deserved to call. I didn't feel right calling the game. But throughout that game, and in every one since, Don Shido has been right there in the booth with them. The, the rest of that year, um, every time we came back from commercial break, it was, hey, you're back on the Chippewa Sports Network with Adam Jackson, Brock Gutierrez, Steve Powers, and Don Shido. There's still a, a picture that I have of Don um, that he's with me every time I call games. And as of last Saturday, the home radio booth at Central Michigan is forever Shido's. Every time we'll come back from break, it's now live from the Don Shido home radio booth. Um, and that's just super special to me that his name is going to be remembered. A plaque in the booth and a name plaque just outside of it make clear to all what Gutierrez and Jaxa have known all along. For us, it's always been the Don Shido radio, home radio booth. It's just uh, now formally done and, uh, and, and it's great to see it on the wall. It's great to see the plaque outside to kind of let everybody else know uh, about the profound influence he had on everybody here at Central. There's never enough time in the gym the way we look at it. Brothers Dan and David Loney are where they love to be this time of year, in the gym at Frankfurt High School, preparing for the state quarterfinals. Um, we've had an up and down year, and there's been a, a lot of times where, you know, people didn't give us a shot to be here. And uh, for these kids to overcome all that and uh, rally together, it, it's an experience of a lifetime. Dan Loney is in his fifth season as the head coach at Frankfurt. I kind of started off as just kind of hanging around practice, didn't really want to commit to a, a full-time thing. And uh, obviously once you get in the gym, kind of one thing leads to another. And before you know it, you know, I was all out assistant coach um, there with Reggie and kind of fell in love with it. And here we are now. His brother David Loney is the school's all-time leading scorer and has been an assistant coach since his brother first took over. We only live about 10 minutes from the school, so we're always going to be local guys. And it means a lot to us to be, you know, coaching at a local school like this where we know all the parents and all the kids more so than just on the basketball court. They get strict if they need to, but most of the time they're like a friend. I mean, we can talk to them, laugh with them, mess with them, and they're really good guys. In just five seasons, the Loneys have set quite a standard for Frankfurt basketball. Tomorrow will be the third time in five years the Panthers will be playing in the quarterfinals. In the Loney's first season at the helm in 2018-19, the Panthers made it all the way to the state championship game before falling short. That was a really special group of kids. Um, we were never the most talented group. Um, just had a, a bunch of kids that wanted to win, that, that worked hard and played together. And uh, nobody really saw that coming. And after this year's Panther team finished 13-8 and in the regular season, nobody really saw them coming either. That team is kind of talked about almost on a daily basis, at least here at practice. They're, they were all about teamwork and taking inspiration from them kind of helped us kind of get together and have one goal. Tomorrow night against Hillman, this year's Panthers will get their shot to advance to the Breslin.
you get into regionals and like it seems like everything happens in like two or three days. So that's one thing I want to make sure that, you know, just soak it up. You're in a quarterfinal game, take a minute, look around the crowd, the environment, the energy, and soak that up and remember that. It's late March, and brothers Dan and David Loney are where they want to be, in the gym at Frankfurt High School, preparing for the quarterfinals. With the success they've had in their five years leading the program, it shouldn't be a surprise they're here. But just because they've been here before, doesn't mean they take for granted how special it is to still be competing this time of year, and to be doing it alongside each other in the community they love. I watched his run to the Breslin, and uh, they went to the Breslin, and. Uh, watching him play and being an all-time leading scorer here and now have him on the sideline and uh, we continue to make these runs. It, it's special to share, share that moment after games with someone you're so close with.